Right, morning people. Well, today's the day. The mystery project is about to be revealed. So I'm just going to go and collect my mate now. And then we're off to the solicitors. Yep, that's right. We're going to the solicitors and we're going to sign a bit of paperwork. Um, all will be revealed in due course. But um, you understand things got to be kept private. So anyway, I'll check in again in a bit. Right, mate, where have we been? We've been here. Yeah, what we've been here for? Yeah, what we've been here for? Just to sign up for our land. Yeah. Completion in a couple of days' time. Yeah, so we won't reveal it until we've actually been here and done this. So, yeah, you're going to see more about this now. Yeah. So, we are currently at Jane Brooks Law, where we've just signed for all five acres. Five acres, yeah. See you in a bit. Well, troops. What you've just seen on the video that uh, myself and my mate have just signed for more or less five acres of land. Um, so I was just going to go through a few things out with a bit of a backstory really. So back in November 23, my mate was registered to look for land at the different estate agents. Anyway, if something came up, he was notified about it. Anyway, this land came up for sale. Basically, it said, um, ideal for future development, blah, blah, blah. No covenants, no restrictions, none to be implied, which is fair enough. So yeah, so with that, we'll put a cheeky bid in. So anyway, there was a minimum amount. I'm not going to disclose that, but um, we put above that. Just thinking, hey ho, if we do, if we do, if we don't, we don't. Anyway. I think it was closing date was 22nd of December because it was a uh, sealed tenders so you, nobody knew what was bidding on what so basically all the envelopes got opened before an independent person apparently don't know but anyway they opened it and we got a call telling us we'd uh, we'd won it was like Jesus so five acres of land anyway Thought, right, well, best start getting things in motion. So, started doing a bit of history searches, get some legal team onto it. Uh, I did my own bit as well. Um, I found out that next to the land, there's a water pump, Yorkshire water pump in station. And there's a, like a dike type thing what runs around. Talking of dikes, there's a pond there. It's actually overgrown and filled. <laughs> But this looks like at some point, this is the land by the way, but I'm not going to show you all yet. So this pond here looks like a water catchment thing and it's running through here, down there, and it's running into that catchment drain at the end. We're going to make it bigger, so that is actually, wait a minute, it's actually 27 metres long. But you can see how over the years it's just grown and been left and all the rest of it. So where we can see the natural flat spots, like there, we're going to try and extend this out and make it bigger. And hopefully use this as a water catchment point for surface water so yes yeah, so um, I had to put in a, a freedom information request to Yorkshire Water to find out what happens regarding this pumping station why it's there now apparently it was for the farm which is no longer there but in times of flood it says that they can release uh, water into the drain or whatever it's pumping I'm sure it's a sewage into the drainage system now obviously you don't want that on your land here Fortunately, this land rises up to the top and the end arm at now is at the lowest point and then that farmer's field uh, behind me, that farmer's field behind me is a lot lower. Now that's had lots of lots of water in it for months now. It's just disappearing. What I'm actually doing, I'm just walking the perimeter of it at the minute. So yeah, so um, I got that information back. Amazing enough, that didn't come up on the search. So it's just as well I did so then questions can be asked. Next things, the legal side. So the solicitors are doing the searches and um, something came back saying that um, there was a covenant on the land. So we raised the question with the other people's solicitors and they said, well, what difference does it make? You're not gonna do out with the land anyway. You've just bought it as this. 
So we had to point out that actually they had sold it saying no restrictions or no, no covenants. We've got it in black and white. So we get to the covenant and it basically says we could build one property on each of the divided plots. Now amazingly enough, it's two big plots and one slither of a plot, but now it's all been combined into one. Um, or sold as one, I should say, it still is three, but sold as one. Technically, we could build three houses, just as it is now, without um, anyone minging. So, <coughs> their solicitor says, well, why, what do they want to do with it? So, promptly, he was told to go forth and multiply, because it's bugger all to do with him, what we're doing with it, all the people who are selling it. They're selling it, they want shut of it. Anyway, that gets left and done and sorted. We had a word with our solicitor, just don't worry about it. You'll be fine. At worst case, check out an indemnity policy um, in case anybody wants to try it, try anything on. Um, so that's that. So we got that, we got that. Yeah, then we got the call the other day to actually go and sign the papers. So now it's just a case of um, getting the bill settled. So what I have started to do is a pre-plan application into the local authority and suggest what we'd like to do with this area. Now, what we really want to do is, see this land behind me, what you can see. So from about that corner there, round to that corner and can't really see, I should turn the camera on really, shouldn't I? So around to there and there, up to the edge of the pond, we want to have a bit of a rewilding project. So we want actually to plant trees, shrubs, you know, all the snowdrops, bluebells, all that sort of stuff, and give this a nice look. And the idea is, you just be able to come on here, walk your dog, you know, and it'll be just be the sole purpose of whoever's living here. Uh, yeah, so we want to do some rewilding. So that is one thing what goes in your favour if you can provide some sort of rewilding. Uh, next of all is we're going to do this as green as we possibly can. So first of all, we're going to be looking at producing our own electricity. Now as it happens here, there's always a wind. So we're hoping we can get a turbine up at the furthest point away from the buildings and we've got enough area to maybe put a bit of solar coverage. Then we want to see if we could do some sort of battery storage, which can then, the, the solar system, any overcharge, will charge the batteries up and operate the buildings, whatever, through the night. Now I, I know how much roughly electricity I use a day, as average family. Now these are not gonna be big houses. These are gonna be more aimed at the senior people in society who were looking at just getting away from the hustle and bustle of the city and just having a bit of a peaceful life. This is a property here. And there's another one over that end there. So the next thing on the planning is um, you're allowed to build as an infill. So basically this area of land has actually got properties to the right in that direction and that one left there. Now that one on the left, let me just see if I can zoom in a bit. That one on the left used to be a little bungalow and it's been extended upwards, extended outwards and made into the house it is. So technically across, Done it. so technically across from there to there is an infill. Now that is over a hundred meters. Uh, so we could easily get someone there. Now the idea is this land is not going to be covered in properties. We only want to build so many. Uh, can't really say how many yet. We've got an idea in our head, but it's about what will be allowed. So we need to discuss all that. But the idea is we want to leave this land as natural as possible. We don't want to do anything with it. All right, yeah, we want to cut the grass and make, make it tidy. Bloody hell, a pheasant. Um, cut it down, make it tidy, make it look the part. But as far as the rest of it, we want people to see forever the fields. How many times do you buy a house and say, nothing will be built there, nothing will be built there. 
and then lo and behold, a couple of years down the line, they start digging up again. Well, me and my partner, we're in control of this land and always will be in perpetuity, let's put it that way. Right, so I'm just walking back up to the old lane now. So I've got the next door's property there. I'm not going to go right up to the fence. But let me just, uh, as you can see there, that's a private property. I did actually, when I was looking on the maps, it looks like that fence there has actually gone out to the right of the road conifers because it used to be where that big, that big tree is. Um, I'm looking on some old plans. I don't know if there's been a bit of a sneaky, sneaky land grab there at some point. Um, CCTV in operation, lovely. That's dead scary. But can't do anything about this. Anyway, I don't know what they're supposed to for on the string. Does somebody think they're setting up a boundary? Somewhere like that, aren't we? Right, so we're back at the front here. Um, Hedgerow, hedgerow, speaks for itself, doesn't it? All just wants tidying up, but we'll leave it as it is for now. Um, another thing about this land, it's actually got two access gates which are going to be remained in place. So there's one along this hedgerow here, which is basically going to be the entrance for whatever we do with this strip of land. And there's one at the far end Right over there, I'm not sure you can see it. Um, it's a bit difficult to make out. But you can see that, um, this one, another thing, sorry. So, if, let's say we're wanting to do something, but there's also developments already going on around here. So, that's the old farm there. They've put four caravans on, and that's getting, there's plans active, which only got passed last year to convert that into property, the old barn built uh, farm buildings etc. So all that is getting developed. So if that can be passed, I'm sure we can be passed just for coming along here. So there's two ticks in the box. Offsetting our carbon footprint, solar, wind, and um, collecting our, harvesting our own rainwater. Now I want to do this specifically is because I don't want to have to keep paying the option water for taking away my the water what naturally falls out of the sky and then they say oh no we want money for that they can shove it up their ass the thing is this piece of land is already charged each year for the rain soaking into the ground into the little drain what's over there now that that beggars belief that that is just taking the piss so natural rain what falls out of the sky in the land the land what's always been here since the world was created all right is being charged for taking the water into that little ditch at the end. So, I want to do water catchment. Uh, depends whether I, whether I go down the filtration system or not, but the water catchment system can easily be used for the flushing of your toilets, your washing machine, etc. Um, if you want to be going on to drinking it, then that's a whole different kettle of fish. There's the other gate. You can see how high it is there, down into this land. So we're going to have to make sure we do get drainage sorted along there. There's also the cost of um, tapping into sewerage. So you've got to hire a civils company, um, and then you've got to go through uh, adopted drainage, and if whether it's adopted or whether it isn't. Apparently on new builds, the drains aren't until after 10 years, then they become part of the local authority. So that's where I want to probably use a cesspit system. Now, not the old type where you think of pumping it out every however it is, but this is um, works on bacteria. The bacteria eats and breaks down anything that's in there, so it should never need to be emptied. The liquids can be sorted. It's all technical. I don't know the full hundred percent thing on that, but anyway, yeah. So that's that. So we've got another property to our right here. That's the one I just showed you back there, the one that's been extended to within an inch of its life. Um, yeah, 
this grass needs cutting back because it's just holding water. But, uh, so going down here, yeah, they haven't got much of a fence here, have they? Not our issue. So I'm not going to walk into that corner there because it looks a bit iffy. Um, just on the other side, there has been a big house built there as well. But there's a, another um, tick in the box that people have still been allowed to build on that green land on that side. Uh, yeah. What's, uh, what else was I say? Yes, I'm virtually back all the way around now. <coughs> so what do you think? I'd be interested to hear what any of you have got to say, good or bad. What would you propose? What do you think about the collection of rainwater um, using solar and wind power? I know solar's got a negative down. Well, they talk about green power, don't they? But technically, none of it's ever green because there's always the production side of it. So let's just get that out there. So let's just say, as green as we can make it, how about that? Because I don't know how to make a wind turbine and I don't know how to make a solar panel or batteries. <laughs> but um, you know where I'm coming from, how far do you go? Um, we'd have to have somebody on a bike pedalling a generator, but then I don't think um, that's allowed anymore. Got to pay a minimum wage or something. <laughs> that's a joke. Anyway, yeah, what do you think? What would you do? I mean, if I stand here now, you can see. Let me just bring the zoom back a bit. So, so we've got all the way back there, round, round, and then it goes beyond that distance as well it goes to where to where you can see the dark area there the bottom of the dark area that's where our land ends and it runs around and around and then comes along this bit of a dog-legged hedgerow so like I said what do you think what would you do we've got a couple of little um, ideas about do we just build them all ourselves or do we split it off into different plots and get the permissions for each plot and then the people can design their own or they can design one and we can build it it's there's lots of options out there isn't they um, it's this this is an exciting time now let, let's not jump the gun but this is a risk for both of us uh, for both parties Okay, I'm using uh, my retirement fund as well as probably some equity from my house um, to sort this. My mate is not doing it from retirement fund, but it's still from his investments over the years. But uh, yeah, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. So just, I've been a builder for a long time, but this is the first time I'll have worked on my own site, doing my own builds, my own projects with another person as well in tow. So we have to get this right. So something else to point out as well, there's actually a drain which runs alongside of this field. But to me, it doesn't look like it's flowing very well. That culvert looks like it's probably blocked. And it runs all the way up, down to the sides. Here is the said pump, which is, it's off our land, but it could still play an integral part in anything we want to do. But, um, yeah, there's a blue sign there. Collecting Yorkshire's water. That's what it says, wastewater pumping station, collecting Yorkshire's water. I'm going to scrub out where it is because I don't want anybody dumping the, the, the um, caravans on our site. Yeah, so it runs around there as well and it's running along here. Yeah, I mean, we need to get that excavated. We'll do the environment agency's job for them and it runs all the way from the top of the street. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is, this is where them caravans have been put here. I mean, at the end, that used to be a farmhouse and it had render over it <laughs> and everything. But uh, now it's looking a bit, it's 
looking a bit sorry for itself. Right, drawing on long enough now, 20 minutes. Drop some comments below. Oh, by the way, come on, let's get these subs in. Um, I've got something called Buy Me A Coffee now. YouTube says I can put that on. So I've put it on. I think I've got one so far. But anyway, um, put the Buy Me Coffee on. I've also got Instagram, so I'll put that up on the screen as well. Yeah, so I still need a few more hundred um, subscription subscribers, if you like. So if you want to follow us on this adventure and see what we get up to, because we're going to fail at some point, something's going to go wrong. We're not, we're not blind to the fact that it's going to be a piece of cake. All right, so let's just see what happens. All ideas accepted, not all rejected. See you soon.